Good evening, Sinkits and Nevis, and welcome to the third edition of The Point. And tonight is all about the youth. We have youth focus tonight, and I am joined by two dynamic and active youths, and they are part of the People's Labour Party Youth Arm, Richard Lee Gums and Rollies Books. How you guys are doing? Good evening. I am Richard Lee Gums, and I'm very excited to be here on the youth edition of The Point. I'm excited. Good evening, everyone. Nice. And my name is Delonta Lewis, and I will be your host for tonight. So I know you guys are excited, but I know a lot of people <laughs> out there are recovering from the long weekend that we had, a very long weekend. We had tropics and we had breaking dawn. So a lot of recovering is happening. A very exciting time here in St. Kitts and Nevis, the month of June, because we have St. Kitts Music Festival coming up. And we have the art show there over in Nevis. So it's a lot of exciting things to do, a lot of exciting things to participate in. And I guess that's why we're here, because we are participating in this political show. I mean, this show is all about the youth, but it's also all about the People's Labour oh, party. party. And so we are excited <laughs> and we are off to a good start here in the studios tonight. Now, St. Kitts and Nevis is young. I mean, we're not even 40 years yet. Could you imagine? And so it is important that as a young country that we harness this excitement and we harness the, 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 the talent of our young people here on the island of St. Kitts in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. So the People's Labour Party is the youngest and fastest growing political party in the Federation in the Caribbean, Caribbean and probably in the world. Yeah. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to say probably in the world. It's a fastest <laughs> growing political party. And the kind of momentum that we have, especially when it comes to the youth, all I can say is that we are growing stronger, we are growing bigger, and we are building better. better. And better. guess who is behind all of this? The vibrancy, the excitement, and everything that you're seeing here, the production, when it comes to our campaign, the youths. Look at myself. I am the spokesperson for the political party, and I am just 28, and that is significant. This party and our leader, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, have always put his trust in young people. Yes. We can see it in the structure and the build-out of our party. We can see how much people have registered and become a member Majority of our members are young people. And tonight we're going to discuss why young people should join the People's Labour Party. In fact, why more young people should join the People's <laughs> Labour Party. Because it is a party for the young people. We share that energy. We share that enthusiasm. And that is why the People's Labour Party is for the young people of St. Kitts and Nevis. We understand, Rollies and Richelieu. That if the young people are not represented in the political process, if the young people are not integrated into the decision making, yes. then guess what would happen? Saying kids will be held back. We don't want to fall in that calamity. <laughs> and so we want to keep moving forward and not backward. And if it's, there is a time for young people to be involved in politics in St. Kitts and Nevis, is no. No. no and i would say to you join the people's labor party the people's labor party is delivering for young people and is determined to build a stronger safer future for all and so tonight we're going to have a good discussion <laughs> i can feel it and i want you guys to call in it's seven six seven nine six eight four Join in the discussion. Let's talk youth. Let's talk investment. Because investing in our youth is the best thing any leader can do. Yes. And that is why I am proud of my party leader, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, and the People's Labour Party. Because of the belief and the trust they have in young people. And I just want to end, because I don't want to take up much of my um, <laughs> time here. But... I just want to shout out to all young people who have taken up roles in St. Kitts and Nevis. I mean, just recently, I think, Richard, your sister was yes. named general manager for Jimmy yep. Decor. Yes. That is a big deal. And guess what? 
People's Labour Party is about big deal. And so I'm bigging up all the young people that are taking up big positions in St. Kitts and Nevis because we want that youth energy to go throughout St. Kitts and Nevis. Not just the orange wave, but we want the young people to be a part of the orange wave mm -hmm. that is hitting St. Kitts and Nevis right now. And so all I want to tell you is that you are a big deal. Every young person in St. Kitts and Nevis, for the People's Labour Party, you are a big deal. You're very important. You know this song? <laughs> for real. You're a big deal. Say St. Kitts young people are a big deal. And that is why we are here, ladies and gentlemen. So I am going to turn <laughs> over to who wants to start first. Well, you still can go ahead. Uh, well, I, I know, I <laughs> so know. I'm going to turn over <laughs> to Rollies as she gave her opening remarks. Rollies. Thank you, Delante. I see you've hit the ground running. And you said it best. Youths are a great investment. And the People's Labour Party has always been investing in youths from skills and development and business training to providing employment opportunities and pathways to enter the workforce. And for this to be sustainable, we need a strong economy that creates the space to manifest right. our dreams, to expand our hopes, to ride our horizon. Mm -hmm. For this to be done, we need an economy that provides us with the backing, the economic backing, to provide the social programs that we need to further encourage and push youth to do what we know how to do best. best. Be That's ourselves. <laughs> COVID-19, in my opinion, has been a tester for our leader. And on the global scale, I think everyone can agree that he scored a 10 on 10. Whether you like him or not, he scored a 10 on 10 in bringing us through this pandemic because he had the youth in mind. And by doing this, he was able to provide for households across St. Kitts and Nevis, both during and even prior to COVID, in terms of educational and financial support for students and development opportunities. And there is more in the pipeline, as you know. Yes. <laughs> the PLP has nurtured and promoted new industries in giving our young people even more opportunities especially in the entertainment industry. We see this through the creation of the Ministry of Entertainment mm -hmm. and Creative mm -hmm. Arts. And recently I heard the story behind it. Wait, and, and wait, 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 let me sip some water for this story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this story, go so, ahead. So this is what was explained to me, that during the 2020 virtual campaign, during a break, the prime minister went behind, you know, where the guys usually operate the sound system yeah. and, and what's not. And he was quite impressed at the skills and talents mm. of our youths. And so he begged the question, who is operating this? Mm. And I was told that the young man answered and said, PM, everything you see here is done locally. Locals are operating it. The equipment, everything is local. Mm -hmm. And the young man went on to say, Priam, you know what we need next? A Ministry of Entertainment. Wow. And as simple as that, he said, consider it done. Wow. Consider you know what? it you know done. What? You know what? That's very good. And guess what? That is a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big deal. No, but this is what we are, we are talking about. When you think about Dr. Harris... For some reason, he understands that the development and prosperity of a country is very much dependent on the development and the prosperity of each youth within that country. Right. Which other leader can you go up to and say, you know what, I think we need this? An entire ministry. Mm -hmm. Nothing was there in the budget for that ministry. Room had to be created. Mm -hmm. Platform had to be set. Yeah. So when you see a leader who listens, who cares, who understands that this is the next wave of prosperity in St. Kitts and Nevis, yes. the orange economy, the entertainers, the creative arts, mm -hmm. and then not just say, okay, I hear you, we're going to do something about it, but actually do mm -hmm. something, something about it. This is what we are talking about. And we'll use that testifies to his strong leadership skills. 
testifies to his innovation and creative skills. And that's the kind of leader that we want managing our country and leading our country, especially at this point in time. So actually, wait, because you, you jump ahead of the host now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't want to say it because that was such a that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. You're a big deal. You're a big deal. That's fine. And so that is what and as a matter of fact, Richie, I know you're new to the People's Labour Party. And that's great because we welcome all. We welcome all. all. We welcome we all. We welcome all. And we are glad to have you on board because you represent everything that the People's Labour Party youth. Believe in because I was once the youth leader, so I am glad that you are here joining us because you have been active at CFBC. You were the president for how long? Three times and vice president once. And vice president once. Yes. So you know how leadership goes. Yes. Big deal. Big deal. Leadership is, <laughs> big deal. Big and leadership deal. is all about service, and that's what we see demonstrated in our country by our prime minister. And with that said, take the floor, my brother. <laughs> I just want to shed some light on what are some of the threats to a strong and safer country for our young people. The People's Labour Party has made strides in empowering young people as this great political party has proven to be futuristic and forward thinking, all of which are reflected in its policies and decisions, like the creation of the Ministry of Entertainment, as stated by my fellow panelists, Rolis. <laughs> Indeed, the youth have been called to lead, as Delante would have said, because they are strong. Mm -hmm. And what better way to envision and prepare for our future than to usher in a cabinet of ministers who represent the very essence of it? Stick up in. Just say that again. Just, just want to, what you want to say. <laughs> what better way to envision and prepare for our future than to usher in a cabinet of ministers who represent the very essence of youth? The PLP way. <laughs> <laughs> However, unfortunately today, there are still threats to our future. Yes. That is why I echo at this time that it is too risky to change leadership. We understand that as young people, the progress that we want hinges on our economic stability. Mm -hmm. From sure. home ownership mm -hmm. to job creation to educational opportunities, you name it. All of these things that are important to young people require financial investments. On almost a daily basis, we hear about a global recession. What this means for our economy, if it's not managed properly, is that our young people will be affected. Our country needs to be prepared in the event that a recession should occur. And I am confident in the leadership of our Prime Minister, as he has proven to be financially prudent and to respond appropriately in difficult times. As a young person, you know, I feel comfortable knowing that peace is holding. Yeah. But it needs to be committed to and improved on yeah. so that our streets remain safe and so that young people can continue to feel protected. You know, all sorts of leaders are making all sorts of promises. But one thing that we are confident about is the ability of our leader to deliver the strong and safe future that we as young people desperately need. This election is about protecting and growing our economy. Without a strong economy, we may not be able to enjoy the luxuries of education, home ownership or financial stability. And good news, young people will soon have the opportunity to say who we trust in leading our mm -hmm. economy and keeping our people safe. We, the young people, we deserve experienced hands, like our prime minister, looking after our economy so that we can weather the storms that are coming, but also find those new opportunities so that we can reach our full potential. Other leaders have shown that they don't have a plan. They don't have the strength. They don't have the experience or work ethics to see SKN through what is coming. With such a huge responsibility, there is no place to vote for a party simply because you are sticking to what 
your family traditionally votes for, correct? You see, when we do this, we do not hold our leaders accountable and we rob ourselves from the promising future that we deserve as young people. In this election, there is no room for trial and error. I repeat that. In this election, there is no room for trial and error. So young people, our future is at stake. So we must vote responsibly. Yes. You know, Delante, sorry. Yeah. Richly made a point about the talks. If we, if we read the news and we look at the yes. economics and such, there, there are indeed talks about a recession. Who remember when was the last recession? Between 2007 and 2010. Yes, about that time. Very good. Mm -hmm. Who remember what happened in St. Kitts in 2010 during that period of recession? Tell us. This is the lady of stories. <laughs> <laughs> this is our oh, second story, story for today. Okay, this is our second okay. story for today. No, but in 2010, during yes. that period, first of all, mm. I, I must say, and I like to tell this story, when the, great, when the depres depression came in yeah. 2009, mm -hmm. I believe that is when Dr. Douglas handed the Ministry of Finance to Dr. Harris. Yes. Mm -hmm. After he would have, you know, take us through that, he took it back in 2010. And in 2010, that is when 17% VAT was introduced. Look it up. Wow. Huh. Look it up. Wow. Again, you spoke about home ownership and land ownership. What happened in 2013? <laughs> what happened in 2013? The land for debt. Land for debt swap. <laughs> 1,700 acres of land no longer in the hands of ordinary people. You see how these people start no me off tonight? <laughs> you see how these people start me off tonight? No, but it's a right serious into issue. It. <laughs> right into it. No, no access they are serious to lands for youth. Yes. 1,700 acres. Mm. That's millions of square footage. And then it was reversed mm. by Thank our you. leader. Thank and you. so let me add a point <laughs> that the People's Labour, why the People's Labour Party? Guess what? We have the strongest leader the most experienced leader in any of the political parties and here. And to add to that, I think even more important that he understands. Yes. He understands because I mean, that, that was saying. his argument. Mm -hmm. If you recall the debate, that was one of the yeah. most powerful debates in the history of our parliament. And I recall Dr. Harry saying, how am I going to explain to the lady in Otley's yeah. that she cannot get any land because they are locked up in the National Bank due to this land for debt swap? Right, wow. And that is that it was the moment he crossed the floor. And you know, even right now, there are a lot of young people that mm. are asking for, for piece of land. You know, hey, I just want to own piece of land. Right. Yes, because... And thank God that the Prime Minister reversed this. Yeah. Because we would more not have half, it. I believe more because than as, half yeah. have as been young taken people, back already. As but young people, as we always think about our future, yes. and part of our future includes securing a piece of land so that we can yes. build our own yes. homes and, in turn, build our families. Of course, and that is why the economic stability of a mm -hmm. country is so paramount yes. and must be at the forefront when of discussing this policies and elections should be about the future yes. yes i know people want to make the elections about all kind of things mm -hmm. but elections are about the, the future. future and you know richly said something that i really like he, he called a lot of words he said who can we trust <laughs> yeah there was a lot of words <laughs> <laughs> a lot of words he said who can we trust <laughs> who do we have confidence in going to the polls i can answer that we're going to the polls. <laughs> And, uh, you know, yeah. there was some good stuff from both of you guys so far. Mm -hmm. You guys just diving right into it without my permission. But that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But uh, I love where the discussion yes. is going so yeah. far. And I love the fact that we can come and we can bring the facts. Because yes. this election is about a lot of things, as you say, really is. People and, want to make it about a lot of things. Yes. And mm -hmm. the economic stewardship of the prime minister. Yes is what we have to start from. But we start from there, we might not be able to finish. They kind of can't catch up. They cannot calculate. Assessor they cannot two. equate. Assessor too. <laughs> How he's performing so good. As you said, he was giving it in which year? 
when he was with 2009. Labour. I hope I'm correct, but if I'm not, a caller will correct me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, he was given it. Yes, yes. he was given it, yes, and sir. he did that. Excellent did. job. And I like when you said 10 out of 10. This is we studied in Jamaica, so we get a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right? And so the discussion is going good. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, the phone number to dial in for this evening is 767-9684. You know, PLP started from number 7. 767-9684. <laughs> and we are going to take a quick break. So stick and stay with us. Okay. Remember... We share the energy, we share the enthusiasm. The People's Labour Party. Never afraid. Make them know I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the leader of the pack. The lion will never stumble or retreat when we are not. I never doubted that West Bastia was with Akila Byron Lisbeth and with the People's Labour Party. And just being in the constituency today, you feel the vibes. I've been on the road, I've been knocking on doors, I've been meeting with the people of West Bastyr, and what they have been telling me is we gave you a five-year term, we want to make sure you have your five years to complete it. And so I am confident, I am more than confident, that in number three, it will be PLP again, it will be Akilah Byron Nisbet again, without a doubt. And so I am looking forward to the campaign trail. This is just a start, a little teaser, for everybody to understand the force called People's Labour Party. We are a force to be reckoned with. And many people don't understand the magnitude of the People's Labour Party. But definitely today, I'm sure you saw it, you felt it, and you know for certain that next election, when it's called here in 2022, it will be the People's Labour Party. It will be Dr. Timothy Harris as Prime Minister. It will be Akila Byron Nisbet as the candidate for West Bastia. And let me tell you, all the other constituency, just wait. We have all eight candidates and we're ready to put them on display. This is only a taste of it. Yes. Get ready for the force called yes. PLP. Yes. 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 And welcome back, St. Kitts and Davis. And as I said, where I am here joined with two dynamic young people, Rollis Books and Richelle Gums. And they're on fire already. I don't know why. <laughs> but they have started delving into the issues that are affecting the youth and the reasons why people should support the People's Labour Party and in particular the young people of this federation. Of course, um, before we go back into some of the key issues, mm -hmm. I just want to, I know video was just showing just now, and I just want to thank everyone for showing up and showing out for our health walk, yes, the Prime Minister's it monthly awesome. health walk. It was big. Did, you guys went, right? Of, of course. course. I know, I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a 10 out of 10. Yes, that was, was a 10 out of 10. And guess what? That was a big deal it was because awesome. it was a big walk so thank you guys for coming on out and showing up and showing off as usual so back over to these two brilliant minds that i have here in the studio this evening <laughs> so let me ask a question i know um the prime minister under his leadership mm -hmm. um there were a lot of benefits for the young people mm -hmm. and i just want to talk about some of those benefits for example, in education, mm -hmm. you know, student loan used to be 10%? 9%. 9%. And I was told that that was since reduced. Yes. To how much? 6%. 6%. So and yes, that, and that's, that's really good. Thing because I heard, <laughs> you know, some leaders saying when they get in, student loan will be reduced. To some amount, but I was like, it's already reduced. Yeah, but that's and that's the thing. A lot of the, the, the candidates out there for the different political parties, they are unaware of the system. And I don't think I need to delve into oh, how much they are unaware of the system. People. Which one? Probably that too. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so we have to be careful. And we are here to let our youths know about these programs. Yeah. And to know what's happening within the system and under the leadership of the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris. And so you guys are going to take it back from me again. So um, 
tell me what, what has been happening besides the decrease in the student loans for students sports anything mm -hmm. just tell me dash it on <laughs> One thing I can definitely speak about, a very good initiative by our Prime Minister, is the creation and the maintenance of the poverty alleviation program in St. Kitts and Nevis. Now, there are so many persons who depend on the poverty alleviation program because, you know, sometimes the end of the month comes and you might fall a little short when it comes to cash. But this program actually serves as a buffer to assist, that, to ensure that you are able to meet your your daily obligations to ensure that you can feed your family and secure your future. Yeah. So I must give commendation to our Prime Minister and those are some of the initiatives that come from having a strong economy because without a strong yes. economy, a program like the poverty alleviation would not be possible. Yeah. And, and um, as simple as we may, we may have it, right? On one hand, there are so many persons grateful for this initiative. Exactly. And on the other hand, I'm hearing complaints. <laughs> well, that always As you comes know, I have a story. <laughs> because... <laughs> third, third, third story for tonight. Because, uh, no, no, no. I, Go saw, right I saw a status, right? Yes. And it was someone who I had no idea that she plays she pays attention to politics so when i saw the status of course i inquired and her question was if there happens to be a change in government will the pap be done away with mm -hmm. and i was like hmm interesting question and she her response to me was yes i want to know because i'm not a beneficiary of it but my parents are and it goes a very, very long way. So to those who say, oh, the government just giving our money, maybe you don't need it. But there, but there are, are so who, who, many persons who, who depend need on it. that who depend extra on $500. That. And this is what I've been saying. Mm -hmm. COVID-19 created a new class. <laughs> now, is, honestly, true. for those of us who now felt like finally we were getting our feet off the ground and we're and starting it's, our business. It's very good that you mentioned that because during the pandemic, mm -hmm. that wasn't even the only program that was ongoing. We right, also know right. about the income support. Right, right. And persons who probably may not have been benefiting from the poverty mm -hmm. alleviation got mm -hmm. a chance to actually benefit yes. from the income support. Right. And so I must also commend the Prime Minister also for that initiative. Right. Again, this is a man. I'm not even going to say a leader or a prime minister. This is a man, yes. a human being who genuinely understands the needs of others, of those who are in need. And how can you understand? Well, you have to go where they are mm -hmm. yeah. and you have to listen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes an hour, sometimes two hours, but you need to listen to understand. And that heart of compassion must be there. No one can give that to you. Good, good talking point. So let me, I will be the devil's advocate for tonight. I have some questions coming in from social media. <laughs> I have some questions in front of me from social media. Tell me about the peace program, your thoughts on it. Richly, um, I know I said earlier you're new to the People's Labour Party mm -hmm. and we have rallies. Um, how do you feel about the peace program? You know, this is something that has impacted our youth because... Crime and violence affected our youth. Young people were dying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the peace program brought some harmony to the streets. Mm -hmm. So can you guys tell me, how do you feel about this program? And do you think that we need to, you know, done away with it? Because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of opposition out there that is saying, mm -hmm. hey, we need to stop this program. What do you think? And this, well, this, this is something serious that people have to consider when going to the polls. Mm -hmm. The peace of the country. Well, I would start by saying that you cannot put a price on a life. And uh, objectively, looking at it from an objective lens, I can say that since the creation of the peace program, we have definitely seen a reduction in serious crime in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so, you know, how I feel now walking on the streets, knowing that, you know, I'm in a safer country, I'm in a safer environment, as opposed to years before. And so I feel that 
this initiative definitely has benefits because it's not just that it's keeping our people safe, but it's also keeping persons engaged. Persons yes. who, without this opportunity, may have been involved in something else. So that's an opportunity for them to remain engaged. And at the same time, they are away from committing serious crime in St. Kitts and Nevis and protecting us as citizens. Right. And I just want to make a quick point before we jump jumping. I know this is one of our favorite <laughs> <laughs> topics. The, the peace program, there have been a lot of negative comments, a lot of bashing, and even from the oppositions with an S, right? I just want to say that in life, everyone deserves a second, second chance. chance. Yes. The People's Labour Party is not about segregation. Okay, mm -hmm. then. We, we, we are a party that welcomes all. And when we say that we welcome all, we mean all. Mm -hmm. People deserve to be a part of the system. Yes. Representation of the, the young people does not mean representation of just the educated. Okay. Or representation of those who are entrepreneurs. Okay. Yes. It's the representation of citizens. every young person out there in St. Kitts and Nevis. And wow. I would like to say tonight that the opposition need to stop. Stop this nonsense about bashing other young people. There was an image that was circulated when the People's Labour Party was canvassing a few weeks ago. I don't know if you guys know about mm -hmm. it. Where they attach guns and weed and all kind of things. Oh, yes. Trying to paint the narrative mm -hmm. that gang man is going house yeah, to house or shop. whatever you want to call it. This is not acceptable. No. This is not what St. Kitts and Nevis stand for. Mm -hmm. It's a whole land of, of beauty. beauty. Our mm -hmm. country. Where, where peace, where peace, peace abounds. abounds. <laughs> that is what the national anthem says. Yes. And if we believe in country above self, and we believe in young people like our leader and our party, then we would refrain from cease degrading. And cease and desist. Yeah. <laughs> our young people. So I just want to put that out there. Yeah, Back over to yeah. Wayne. Well said. Well. Well said, Delante. Honestly, representing young people doesn't mean only representing the educated, those mm. who would have gone through tertiary education, or representing the entrepreneurs, but every single one. The entire mm. demographic. The entire demographic. And I like to look at leaders' response to mm. map their leadership. Because at one point, I think our homicide number was at 35. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you two recall, but you know, I like to go back and bring my stats. Yes. In November 2013, Dr. Douglas called a rally. Mm -hmm. You know, they like match and they like the music and they like to call the rallies. <laughs> he called a crime. No, I'm very serious. Mm -hmm. And it's ridiculous. He called a crime and violence rally in November of 2013. You can go on YouTube and you will find it. Dr. Douglas crime and violence rally November 13 as a response to the exceedingly high crime rate. Wow. And now, because I remember the first episode of The Point mm -hmm. and Dr. Harris was asked the question about who really started this peace initiative. Mm -hmm. Because prior to that, a video was circulating of, you know, the People's Action Movement claiming that they were the ones who inspired it. And I love Dr. Harris's yeah, remember response. The, remember they said they don't know anything you about know, it. You know, they're confused. <laughs> they know they're inspired. I, I can't keep up. They inspire, they don't know. They don't know they inspire. I'm telling you. But Dr. Harris's response seemed most honest and genuine. He did not take credit by himself. Yes. He said, a matter of fact, a group, civil society, the police, mm -hmm. the evangelical association, mm -hmm. all of these groups came together and decided on this initiative. Wow. Hmm. And so the peace program, I like, I, I went in discussions, I do say that sometimes it seems as a double-edged sword. Because on one side, you know, the aim at which it was aimed at, which was to reduce yeah. the very high crime rate, has been achieved. Correct. Mm -hmm. 
has been achieved. And as Richard pointed out, it's not that these individuals are getting free money. Mm -hmm. They are actively engaged in, in skilled work in society. And that is what the People's Labour Party is about, counting youths in. Counting youths counting in. you in. Every youth in St. Kitts and Nevis. So we're still on the topic, why the People's Labour Party? And mm -hmm. I think we're going good so far. We talk about PAP. We talk about the peace. We talk about the income support. The income support. We talk about the yes, reduced rates mm -hmm. in student loans. Mm -hmm. um, I know we have a lot of um, other things we can talk about. I don't think it could take one show. Right. But uh, is there anything else? I know there's some questions popping up about land ownership there. On social media, someone is saying that um, young people still not getting land. Same old story. Um, you're getting to own land. What do you guys have to say about that with the land ownership? Because I know you touch base on land ownership. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we as we did say that, well, according to the news I've read, the Prime Minister has indeed reclaimed some of those 1,700 acres of land mm -hmm. which were locked up with the National Bank mm -hmm. um, as a result of Dr. Douglas's land for debt swap. Yeah. My response is that of course, it's a process. Mm -hmm. I am not sure what else the, um, the process entails in terms of after the reclamation of land, what's next? Mm -hmm. How are right. they allocated? Is it that there, there will be, and this is probably something they can consider, mm -hmm. section off a portion of land for youth of a certain age? Mm -hmm. While we touch base on education earlier, I want to ask this. What happens for those students who probably would have gone to CFBC, mm -hmm. completed their two years, mm -hmm. and then, you know, trying to look for a job or probably not ready to go overseas to pursue further education? Is there something there for to those set of um, young people, those young individuals, you know, going to CFBC? I think basically what you've just described is uh, what I would call a transition period. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, that was the initial purpose of the step. Yeah. So we would recommend, and I think, you know, our party leaders are actually considering to have a step up. Let the step be what it was intended mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Let those exiting CFBC and even coming back from university like UWE, you and I yeah. attended UWE. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we go through a step for mm -hmm. two years or so or until we are settled in our minds what we really want to do next. Mm -hmm. Let step be what it was intended to be. Nice. Richly, over to you. Very good point. You are new to the People's Labour Party mm -hmm. um, and you are youth. <laughs> what do you like most about um, the leadership of the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris? Or can I can I say, or oh, what attracted you to the people's <laughs> to the people's they look party? Good. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> what attracted you to the people's Labour Party? Well, for one, it's a new party, and mm -hmm. one thing I can definitely say is that I've always witnessed the inclusion. Before that, it was just something that I heard on the streets that mm -hmm. the Prime Minister welcomes all. But now, being part of the People's Labour Party, I have seen that materialize. Because from since being here as an active member of the, of the People's Labour Party, I feel included in everything that's going on. And I think that's one of the things that young people want to feel. Young people want to feel useful. They want to feel included. He doesn't see people by colors. Right. So the parties that you would have represented before are non-existent. What he sees is your heart and your genuine desire to contribute to nation building. And I also love the way how he managed our country, specifically during such a difficult time. Mm -hmm. Anyone who would have looked at his leadership skills with an objective lens can attest to his strong economic plans, which were able to ensure that our most vulnerable groups in society were able to benefit. Mm -hmm. And when I assess that situation, and I look at the inclusiveness of our prime minister, I look at how he manages our economy, I feel confident you're not going into the next five years with this type of leader at the helm of our country. 
Because these next five years, let's face it, it's not a time to take risks. Mm. And so I feel more confident putting my support in the People's Labour Party than any other political party at this time. Big, big deal. Big deal. <laughs> and, and big deal. <laughs> big deal. <laughs> the youth of this country are big deal, and that is what we are about. Yeah. And we are glad to have you. We are glad. I am the spokesman, so I can speak for the People's Labour Party. That's right. <laughs> we are glad to have you. Now, one of the important issue for this election, because we're going into an election. Yes. They didn't want it to be here, but now we're here. <laughs> we're not going to even talk about how we got here, because we are moving forward and yes. we're looking towards the future. Is employment. I know under Timothy's, Timothy Harris' um, leadership yes. that a lot of young persons became entrepreneurs, um, the statistics would show that. I know a lot of young people would have been employed. In fact, something happened recently. I think some amount, number of young people were regularized. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you know the numbers, Carolis knows the statistics well. <laughs> so you can tell us I how many think, people. I think it's uh, about 467 60. step workers were regularized. But again, if I'm wrong, a caller would correct me. And that is a big deal. Yeah, that is a, a big, big deal. deal. And I can't sing, you know, but I really love this song, you know, because Richley, Richley said something, and I'm glad he's there because Richley would have supported the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party in the last mm -hmm. election, right? And that's okay. That's okay because we welcome <laughs> all, and this is a new election. Exactly. And, uh, you know, this, this song with the big deal, I'm a big deal. So he said, this have nothing to do with red or yellow. This one is about PLP. So big exactly. up all the young people that's coming no, on board. No, she said this one is about country. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but, uh, but what do you say? What do you say? What's the average? Four point oh, what? Great point, point average. average. No, I can't sing. No, that. I can't. Ten percent. Ten percent increase. Ten point ten percent is a big increase. Are <laughs> <10 laughs> <10 laughs> we never cheater to get it? Borrow money from the IMF. Ah, <laughs> you see, in the blanks, dude. Exactly. That's what I love very much. A big deal. It's all about being a big deal mm -hmm. and counting you in, the yes. youths. Yeah. The youths yes. are a big deal. Now, let's stop saying it tonight. The youths are yeah, a big deal. Mm -hmm. And that is what the People's Labour Party is it's about. about. Making our youths in this election a mm -hmm. big, big deal. Anybody could sing this song and remix it for us? I'm going to put the party in trouble tonight. Anybody could remix this song for us <laughs> and send it to us. We're going to give you a, a, a nice gift. Yeah. I love that song. Yeah. Big deal. We're going to put it out there in a competition. I love it. So the youths are a big deal in this election. And we are here tonight yes. to tell you why the youths of this country should support this People's Labour Party. Now we're going to a break. And we're going, when we come back, we're going to take some phone calls. So 767-9684. Mm -hmm. Get ready. Never afraid. Make them know I am the Alpha and Omega. I am the leader of the pack. The lion will never stumble or retreat when we are not. I never doubted that West Bastia was with Akila Byron Lisbeth and with the People's Labour Party. And just being in the constituency today, you feel the vibes. I've been on the road, I've been knocking on doors, I've been meeting with the people of West Bastyr, and what they have been telling me is we gave you a five-year term, we want to make sure you have your five years to complete it. And so I am confident, I am more than confident, that in number three, it will be PLP again, it will be Akila Byron Nisbet again, without a doubt. And so I am looking forward to the campaign trail. This is just a start, a little teaser for everybody to understand the force called People's Labour Party. We are a force to be reckoned with. And many people don't understand the magnitude of the People's Labour Party. But definitely today, I'm sure you saw it, you felt it, and you know for certain that next election, when it's called here in 2022, it will be the People's Labour Party. It will be Dr. Timothy Harris as Prime Minister. It will be Akila Byron Nisbet as the candidate for West Bastia. And let me tell you, all the other constituency, just wait. We have all eight candidates and we're ready to put them on display. This is only a taste of it. Yes. Get ready for the force called yes. PLP. Yes. Yes. Ready for who feel the money now? See to the planning up. I am the answer. I know me, God. 
<laughs> and we're back to the point the third edition ladies and gentlemen and it's all about the youth counting youths in and we're going to put on our headphones because now it's time to hear from you our listening audience and the number to call is 767-9684 if you have a question if you have a comment for my panelists here this evening please don't be afraid to touch that dial All right, so no callers yet. So, right, we don't forget you can call 767 9684 to get on the show. So, back over to. Do we have a call? I think we have a call. All right, so no callers yet. So, right, don't forget you can call 767 9684 to get on the show. Hello, good evening. Let me know where you are. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi, good evening. You're on air. Hello. Yes, good evening. We can hear you. Yeah. Good evening. You you kind of soft. Okay. Can but you anyway, hear me? can you hear me any better now? Yeah, yeah. Good evening to right, you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. I am the blood of the heart of People's Labour Party, <laughs> and I just called to commend you all as youngsters for the representation that you all are giving to all the young people who are listening to this program. It is so intelligent in, in, um, in, farm, in, in, in farming, and at the end of it, all who listen to this program will be enlightened. Because this is one program anyone should be interested in listening. This is not a program that spread propaganda, and tell lies and try to humiliate and say all manner of evil about the best leader in the Caribbean, which is Dr. Timothy Harris. Thank God for him and the vision that he has to include include all young people from four corners of the earth of the Federation in his policy. So you all are doing a great job tonight. Thank you guys for that. <laughs> Thank Have you so much, Carla. Thank you very much. We appreciate Same it. to you. Yes, guys. So, as we were saying, the caller made a point about... Hello, good evening, caller. Hi, um, 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 uh, I wanted to give my um, take on this huge show. And it says that, um, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you, can you turn down the, 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 the radio show in your background, please? There's a feedback caller. Hello, good night. Yeah, my, my, my concern is about this peace thing. How about the, the youths that don't, um, the youths that weren't involved in the peace program? How, how, uh, what, what is being done about them? Do you understand? I really need to, I really, I'm sort of great people clamoring for, you know, Danger, hot, and you know that that that's a new star. When this this program, so what? Okay, thank you, caller. We thank that caller for that call. Good evening, caller. You're on here. Good night. Good night, young people. Good, good night. Good night. <laughs> Yeah, good night to the point. Good yeah, night. Yeah, this is the politics here. Yeah, good night, good night. Yes, yes. Welcome. This is the politics here. And first, I always want to thank God for life. Thank God for the Federation of Thinking Music. And thank God for the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris, our leader. 
I believe that Dr. Harris has made a great input in this country that when when he leave the Dr. Douglas regime when they turn him away. I believe he stuck for himself for the people of this federation. I think it may be. But you know that some people Peter and some people are cancer. But you all are young people. And we know what was going on under the farm administration with these young men like going to nowhere with yes. guns. Yes, yes. And Dr. Harris, the, the brilliant idea, bringing an export from Jamaica and walk, the export walk around him in his cabinet and do what they got to do to eliminate them guns off the road and get the young people Get the young people them something positive to do, especially with the peace program, because the peace program is very important. It is, yes. So, a young men and women who had nothing to do, they could find something positive to do, get loan a trade, do something that they can, they, 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 they can find some kind of life for them. But young people, you have to pick up and try to encourage the young people because that's what it, that is what I do every day. Go around and encourage the young people because PLP has saved this country. Not get us what PLP has saved this country out of the uh, disaster. I don't care who comes from PLP when they was in government with PLP. PLP has saved this country from a disaster. You all have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank have you a very wonderful much, day Carl. as well. Yes. Do you guys have... Hello, good evening. Caller, you're on air. Hello, good night. Hey, good night. Hi, good, hi, good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Y'all, so, so pleased. <laughs> Wally, Whitley, and Young. It's <laughs> the PLC. You don't know. <laughs> I have a question for you guys tonight, sir. What do you think of the messages coming out of the PAM campaign and also the Labour campaign? I need you guys to answer me on that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carla. All right. Hi, good evening, caller. You're on here. That is okay. All right, guys. So we want to thank those callers that have called into our show so far for their feedback. And I want to touch on something quick before we go to the the messaging from the other political parties. The 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 issue of propaganda mm -hmm. during this campaign or this election. We know people love to say, oh, it's silly season. But what does it take about um, the propaganda? For me, this campaign is a serious campaign, a serious election. You know why? Because we have just, you know, we are coming out of a two, hard time, two hard years, you know, with the pandemic. And now it's time to focus on post-pandemic. And that is why economic stewardship and leadership and all of these things are so important because... We have to make a serious, serious choice when we go to the polls. And so propaganda has no place, has no room in this campaign. And we should always be discussing policies. What kind of policies will be affecting our young people? Correct. Mm -hmm. Because we would have to live with that choice. After we ink up with finger and replace with X, we would have to live with that choice for another five years. So how do you guys feel about the issue of propaganda? Well, I was actually looking for a quote I saw that mm -hmm. I have come to love very much. And it says, when the debate is lost, slander becomes the tool of the loser. Correct. I don't think we need to go anywhere from there. <laughs> Leave it there. Leave it right there. Leave it there. So one caller said that um, PLP has saved this country from a disaster. 
the program has accomplished um, its <laughs> goals and objectives, the peace program. And then there's the big question. What do you think of the messages coming out of the PAM campaign and the CCM campaign? I don't want to start because I wouldn't finish. But <laughs> what do you guys what, think? What messages? I mean, what messages? Like I, like I said previously, you know, a lot of people are trying to make these elections a lot of things. Distractions. Elections should and always be about the future. Yes. Definitely. Unless you're coming on a platform to tell the people how you plan to move the country forward, especially coming out of COVID. And mm -hmm. we know we are still living in the shadow of COVID as far right. as the economic not, oh, side. The exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So unless you're coming on the platform to tell the country how you exactly. plan to move it forward, you're not saying anything. And that and, is my point. There is no message, saying, there is mm -hmm. no substance, there is a lot of hype, a lot of music, a lot of sang and dance uh, about what exactly. Fingers. Who did that? I was just, saying, I was just about here. to say that. And the, young, and, and the young people of this country, yeah. they don't want to hear that. No. They want <laughs> to hear who is best for this country. Yes. And ritually, and you, you guys alluded to that the People's Labour Party is the best option that we have yes. because we have an experienced leader. When you look at the other leaders for the opposition, they are, one of them, inexperienced. <laughs> the next one is unaware of what is happening <laughs> in St. Kitts. That is the reality. And we have to be real. We have to be real going to the polls. What leadership do we want for post-pandemic to take St. Kitts? you said that the Prime Minister was given a specific portfolio when he was a part, or when yes. he was in government in yes. 2007, did an excellent job, yes. steered the ship, yes. management, yes. 10 out of 10. When you're good, you're good. <laughs> when you're good, you're good. Good at financing, what? surplus after surplus, after double surplus. salary, 10% increase. And we are saying... What is it we are going to the polls to do? Where do our trust and confidence lies? And it is with the People's Labour Party. The People's Labour Party ensured that our young people can become landowners because it was under our leader. The land for debt swap was reversed. You said it. Richly alluded to something again. More jobs for our young people. More money in our young people pocket. <laughs> that is the kind of leadership. Well, I would assume that we yeah. would want continuing as we enter into well, as we get ready to go to the so polls. You see why he is the spokesman. <laughs> <laughs> what I find interesting, the caller would have asked, is yeah. that what I'm seeing right now is a blame game going on. And I feel like Political parties are blaming instead of trying to find real solutions right. to the problems that we are facing. And I feel that that is a distraction. What we have to remember is that both political parties have been given an opportunity before to lead. And they have demonstrated their incompetence. Let's not forget Strong that on the previous administrations, we have seen... The increase in the national debt. Mm -hmm. We have seen an increase in crime. Yes. We have seen a weak economy. Yes. And mm -hmm. so what I want to say is that while the other parties are promising, mm -hmm. PLP has been delivering. But which yeah, one that's the right there? Wait, wait, wait. Said, okay, go ahead, Because there was increase in fuel surcharge. Just was... And then again, we were told <laughs> to come and match. They love these matches. <laughs> to come and match for that increase that was given under that particular leadership. <laughs> you see the madness? But let's stick up in there. Back over to what you said about mm -hmm. the increase. Mm -hmm. You remember that all this increase caused us to have the the introduction of the value the value yes. added, the seventeen yes, percent yes. yes it was the leadership of our caring prime minister that came and took that All from food yes. and medical supplies yes. and and funeral expenses duty free allowance and duty free allowance so these are the issues mm -hmm. and we must not forget we must not confuse our mix up 
I think we have a... Okay. So we're going to go to a break. No, we're going to go to a break. So don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the number to call is 767-9684. And you can call and give us your input as well in the youthful discussion that we are having. Yep. Vibrant and enthusiastic discussion. So we are eager to hear you guys. So don't forget 767-9684. We share, we share that energy. We <laughs> share that enthusiasm. The People's Labour Party. We are PLT. Never afraid. Make them know I am the alpha and omega. I am the leader of the pack. The lion will never stumble or retreat when we are under I attack. never doubted that West Bastia was with Akila Byron Lisbeth and with the People's Labour Party. And just being in the constituency today, you feel the vibes. I've been on the road, I've been knocking on doors, I've been meeting with the people of West Bastia, and what they have been telling me is we gave you a five-year term, we want to make sure you have your five years to complete it. And so I am confident, I am more than confident, that in number three, it will be PLP again, it will be Akila Byron Nisbet again, without a doubt. And so I am looking forward to the campaign trail. This is just a start, a little teaser, for everybody to understand the force called People's Labour Party. We are a force to be reckoned with. And many people don't understand the magnitude of the People's Labour Party. But definitely today, I'm sure you saw it, you felt it, and you know for certain that next election, when it's called here in 2022, it will be the People's Labour Party. It will be Dr. Timothy Harris as Prime Minister. It will be Akila Byron Nisbet as the candidate for West Bastia. And let yes. me tell you, all the other constituency, just wait. We have all eight candidates and we're ready to put them on display. This is only a taste of it. Yes. Get ready for the force called yes. PLP. Yes. Yes. Get huge savings and blazing hot deals at Smart and Erlan Electronics. Shop at any four stores and get blazing hot deals. Get amazing savings on computers, smart TVs, stoves, refrigerators, washing machines, cell phone accessories, tablets, and smartphones starting as low as $199 and so much more. Everything you need for your home or business at great prices from some of the world's top name brands. Only at Smart Electronics Outboard Zante and Highland Electronics on Ford Street. Visit your nearest store for details. Conditions apply. All COVID-19 protocols will be observed. Yeah. <laughs> right, and we're back to the third edition of The Point, and it's all about the youths tonight, okay? So I have a question for my panelists here. Um, what do you guys think the future will be like under a PLP-led government? What do you think the future will be like under a PLP-led government? I could see inclusion. Mm -hmm. And if I weren't a PLP supporter and member, but rather a PAM or SKNLP, I would be worried. Worried because... You know, I like to listen to people. So, of course, I've heard stories yeah. of victimization on either end. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard the story. As a matter of fact, it was Mr. Aswal Elliott who told me this story of the PM himself being victimized mm -hmm. under a PAM administration. Mm -hmm. Mr. Elliott said, oh, yeah, you know, they did victimize your uncle. Yeah, when he wanted to apply for a scholarship, they threw it in the garbage. And mm. we know there are stories of mm. PAM supporters being victimized by SKNLP. What I can say about the PLP, mm -hmm. I believe I've listened and I've watched the Prime Minister in action. And he has always said that unity was never about party. Mm -hmm. Unity has always been about bringing the people of a federation together because yeah. again not to cut you up but we think we have a call we'll come that's back. a very strong point <laughs> we'll come back to that early so, <laughs> so hold your thought together good okay. evening caller
Good evening, caller. You're on the point. Yes. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening, caller. You're on the point. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, good evening. I just called to wish the two of you all the best of luck and the good work that you all are doing. But when Timothy Harris, our Prime Minister, started, he was young like all you. Mm -hmm. And he will make it all the way to the Prime Minister of this country. So i glad how you are all coming out and concentrating on the young people and teach them the way to go to be successful like Timothy Harris with a party like this. And God can bless all you because all you know what Timothy Harris stands for, for the young people, the old people, anybody in the Federation. And all you keep up the good work. God watching over all you. Thank you so much, God. God bless you all. And God bless yeah. you as well. Okay. All right. So, what is you were saying? As I was saying, this concept of unity, the Prime Minister time and time again has echoed that unity has never been about party. Do we have another caller? So, we have another, another caller. Call. Well, I'm so sorry no, for no, interrupting no, no, you. No, 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 <laughs> Hello, good night. Hi, good Hello, night. Good You're night. on the point. Hello? You're on the point. Good night. We can hear you. Hi, good night. Yes. Um, Great discussion tonight. I'm here and I'm listening. But I have one question for you guys, and I'm glad it's a youth panel tonight because I want to hear it from the youth. Thank you, has a lot of talent. A lot, a lot of talent. It's not just in the entertainment se um, segment, but we have uh, people who are seeing stress. I've seen this young lady, her work was displayed recently in um, Breaking Dawn. She did all these um, suits and, you know, clothes for people. And everybody was in awe. But she's a very young girl. She lives in Lower Monkey Hill there. I want to know what you are having store for young people with such great talent. Such great talent. Not just the singing and that thing, you know. Other parts, there's so much talent in thinking. But a lot of it is going to waste because people have not seen the young people. They have not really taken the time out to talk to them because I think they feel like, okay, they can't come down to their level or what. But if you reason with them, you would realize we're rich with talent. We're rich and coming from the young people, the very young people. So tell me what you all have in store for them. I'll listen after you. Yes, thank you, Carla, so much for that question. All right. That's a good question. Who wants to take that question? So what we have in store for young people with such great talent? Do you want to take that question, Richard? Richard, you don't want to take that question? I think I will piggyback on what you're saying. OK, let's see. I'll join in. <laughs> OK, I'll go. I think part of. Okay. Well, this response really stems from the discussion that we were having earlier okay. about the STEP program and creating, you know, an opportunity for young persons to become employed. And so I can see with a PLP administration that there will be opportunities for young persons to become employed in all of these different areas where they have skills. And as we would have said earlier, with having a strong economy, this would ensure that young people are able to access the necessary grants and financial resources that they would need to, to operate in these operate. types of industries right. in St. Kitts and Nevis. And I think to add to that too, um, in terms of young people with great talent, mm -hmm. what is important is funding. I yes, think this that's is an extremely issue. important thing. We have time. the talent, but I think, think funding. And luckily, um, loans have become more accessible and easily accessible under uh, Timothy-led administration. And so, on the, uh, back to the question that I asked, Wallis, because this is a good question for this one. What do you see? Where, how do young people fit in with a PLP-led government? And this is important, harnessing those yes. talents. Those talents yeah, so. definitely. That's where it's at, harnessing those talents. And um, 
as you would have mentioned, the youths are often engaged in PLP policy discussions. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things our party is pushing is similar to the concept of eat what you grow. So you know you have eat what you grow. Mm -hmm. What we believe in is earn through your own. Mm -hmm. Now what does that mean? Whether you are academically inclined, mm -hmm. vocationally inclined, technically inclined, mm -hmm. creatively inclined, your God-given gifts and talents mm -hmm. should allow you, and the Bible says it, your gifts will make way for you. Your God-given gifts and talents should mm -hmm. allow you to earn a substantial living. Whether it's through having an annual youth talent show where we invite youths having different talents, whether it be sewing, as um, they call a mention, through uh, painting, drawing, mural, mural competitions, whether it be through entertainment. We invite them to an annual youth show. We choose a top 10 or a top 20. We export those talents. We, we have the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Why not partnership with these other countries? Mm -hmm. Japan. Dubai, you know, let's export our talents. Let's take our talent to the show. We had the Expo 2020 Dubai last year. And I believe there was a, a, a photograph done by one of our photographers. I think it, it was Bijan. Mm -hmm. Bijan Bass. And that went viral. More people got to know him. Mm -hmm. He gained a few a few followers from that so i would say export our talents mm -hmm. and let's earn through your own let's push that to the professionaliz yeah. mm. professionalization of skills and talents whether it be through sports arts and craft um painting mm -hmm. entertainment whatever it is let's gather those talents together hone and harness those talents and export them nice Richelieu, why do you think a PLP government should invest in our youths? <laughs> that's such a good question. <laughs> I know that's why I asked it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of us say the youths are the future, but when we really think about it, the youth definitely are our future. The youth are going to be the future doctors, the future lawyers, the policemen and women that we will need when we get older. And so I feel that it's important now to equip young persons with the education that they need to ensure that they are able to fulfill whatever dreams that they may have, whether their dreams may be working in a bank or owning their own businesses, so that in future they can become productive members of society. Because once we keep these young persons productive, we ensure that they are able to earn their own income and we ensure that they keep away from from gangs and other social ills that will affect us if we do not keep our young people engaged. So right. it's necessary. So the best investment we can make is, is in, in our, our young people. people. And it's our young people. And let me add this, because we are, a lot of young people are wondering what would life be like under PLP-led government? And I would say a more diversified economy. That is what young people are looking forward to. A diversified economy where we don't just focus on tourism alone. Where we can diversify the, con the economy and have different aspects where young people can be fit in. Mm -hmm. Because ain't everybody might be able to fit into tourism. But once you diversify right. the economy and you have different economies up and running, then you can fit Every other young person, that's what we're about. Yeah. Counting you in. Yeah. Not just you, Richelieu, who are so academically inclined. Yeah. Or Rollies, who, what you did again, Rollies? Politically, Politically inclined. <laughs> but we're counting in everyone. everyone. And so, a PLP-led government is about diversifying our economy. Moving away from one industry, which is, which is tourism. And fitting more young people in different industries, That's creating more jobs, mm -hmm. harnessing more talent, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of talent out there in STEM, um, it, robotics, oh, yes, there, there yes, are a lot of different yes. talent out there, not just here, Jason, and, and those different talent, there are a lot of things that young people want to try, yeah. and we are saying, when you try the People's Labour Party, 
you will be able to try your real potential yes. under peer led yes. government. Yeah. So give the People's Labour Party a chance exactly. to diversify our economy. We cannot do it without an experienced leader with a vibrant and strong youth base. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm ex that question got me excited. And I hope I'm not jumping ahead of myself because I believe there was a sneak peek of mm -hmm. a slate of, slate of candidates. Right. And you touched on it. We see a diverse group of young people and it makes me excited very excited we see engineer mm -hmm. we see marine biologists and marine scientists mm -hmm. we see experts in ict a part of the plp slate sneak peek that was we see <laughs> we see business we see owners business, business owners right. and and stick up in because i like to push this point mm -hmm. We are not talking about business owners who went to London School of Economics and did management of business mm -hmm. and come back You're to tell grassroots. us. grassroots. Grassroots. Mm -hmm. You build from down up. Right. You build from, yeah, ground up. Yeah. Ground up. <laughs> you build from ground up. But here's the thing. You understand the local dynamics. Yes. So when I go to these businessmen, I say, well, how we get to build such a bus, if you want to call it a bus service for yourself. And you have heard his story in part, mm -hmm. and, and this is what we want. We want people to understand our economy, our small island state economy. We want people to understand the resources that are available to us here in St. Kitts and Nevis. We want people to understand how to tap into those sources when to tap in those sources, yeah. when to expand, how to manage. Mm -hmm. And so we want people with a local knowledge. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have touched base on under plp led government. We are looking at more land ownership. Yes. We are looking at owning more house, yes. houses. We are looking at uh, safer streets. Yes. We are looking at a stronger economy. Of course. Under plp led government. Of course. We are looking at more opportunities for our young people. And uh, I just want to touch base on uh, something real quick as it relates. What about sports? Can we talk about education, mm -hmm. decreasing student loans, etc., land ownership, etc.? What about sports? Because sports is a big thing now. Yeah. I've heard a lot of talk about the opposition, you know, talking about uh, facilities. And I'm saying, you know, facilities is not everything, it's not all. Facilities are good. Yes, we must have the good facilities for our people. But what else do you think the appeal to led government can do in terms of sports for our young people? Like I said, mm -hmm. earn through your own. Mm -hmm. When you talk about sports, sports is a part of us, is a part of culture, is a part of childhood. Mm -hmm. Is that a phone call I coming in? I think that's in? a phone call coming in. <laughs> Hello, good evening. You're on the point. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, blessed. Greetings to you, sir. Yeah, blessed. Young yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yeah. Um, oh, I hear you talk with this initiative, right? Yes. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I hear you talk with this initiative. You, you probably, you, you probably the peace initiative closely. Is that the question, sir? Yeah, I just don't want to have anything. Okay, no problem. You can realize. Yeah, okay, blessed man. Yeah. yeah. I hear, I hear, blessed good evening, man. I hear you see how you are going to the peace initiative, right? Yes. You follow the peace initiative closely. Is that your question, sir? When you finish your question, I will respond. No, no, because I want to respond, sir. So I just ask you, I tell you closely, you ain't got to answer your time for one, sir, right? Okay, yeah, no problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want to look at it very, very closely. Because I could tell you now for a fact that they are not following closely. You got to look at all the aspects of the people you need to do. 
Yes, I can hear you well, sir. Yeah, you listen to me. My client is not going to come to the world of the world. Alright? We ain't got a piece of initiative in the country. Yeah. I asked the other way to be on the party, right over the road. To change the game. Because it is not a piece of initiative. Now, I'm like, I'm going Yes, 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 yes sir. We, we, we are listening to you. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah okay, bless me. This is not a two things to say. Let me tell you. Because you are a little bit of a bad guy. Why are you hear me? I tell you, you hear me like them bad guys, right? So, yeah, we are, we are so, sorry to cut you off. You have some callers. So, if you have the question, you can ask it. Mm -hmm. Let me just say what No, Let me just say what this is, man. I'm going to know right now. Okay, no problem. Go ahead. <laughs> Yes, it is not no peace in this It is people keeping in touch with the emotion for intimidating purpose in the future. That's why we have a peace initiative. You must that you hit him. That's why I ask if you're probably close to you. A peace initiative. You must that you hit him. If you are not a good grandchildren and apart from the party, more than the other day, some criminal activities, you know what I mean? So thank you for your concerns. All right. So back. I think we have one. Hi, right, good evening, Collie on the air. Hi, good evening. Welcome to the point. Good evening. Good evening. Back there and back there, guys. I'm happy to see young people here. I always believe in young people elevating themselves. And I see you have chosen the PLC party. Now, we know the cost of living has increased. What can your party uh, what will your party do for young people in terms of um, student loan having a lower interest rate? What about land and houses and jobs? These are some of the areas that people are kind of uh, wanting to improve in, along with our um, health care education. So, again, I'm asking, what can we expect? From the PLC party, as your as yourself is a youth, what can we expect from you? Thank you so much for that, Bucky. All right. So, where do we want to start off from? I think that that Bucky post. I think we would have put this into context already during our discussion for tonight but in terms of cost of living what would the party do for young people mm. with land houses jobs health care etc before we go to bucky the caller that asked about um the phraseology the alternative lifestyle pathway being called the peace initiative mm -hmm. he said he basically said it should not be called a peace initiative because a peace initiative must include the victims what I would like that caller to do is check with the Department of Social Services mm -hmm. or the counseling unit and see if this is not something that is done. I believe it is something that is done with victims of those who have lost a um, family member via crime and violence go through a period of counseling, right? But if this is not so, then... The caller made a good point. The victims, they're still sufferers, yes. But yeah. I think it is a part. But if it is not, then we recommend that it be included. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about cost of living? Mm. What about cost of living? Because that is that is one that the youth have been... And I know we've been touching, yeah. touching this on, yes. on, on some of these things that Bucky would have... Um, 
asked about right. in his response, in right. his question. Right. So cost of living and what the party will do for young people as it relates to that. Very good question because before we started taking calls, I was going on to say how unity is not about party. Unity is about bringing the people of St. Kitts and Nevis together. Why is this important? This is important to answer Bucky's concern because we live in a global space. Yes. We are not isolated. We are affected. We are impacted by the global space and what happens around us. And we have seen this in the rise of food. It's, food is not just increasing here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Fuel is not just increasing here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Supply chain of goods and services are not only increasing here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Mm -hmm. We see the effect of the Ukraine-Russia war. We are impacted by the global space. And that is why it is so important to bring all of our peoples together so we can juice and make the best juice, whether it is orange or watermelon or what's yellow? What's a yellow juice? Whether it's orange or watermelon, <laughs> we need to unite our people, bring everybody together to, so we can have the best response to what is happening in the global space. Again, in order for us to deal with these issues, we cannot stress the importance of the economic stability of a country. And that is why St. Kitts and Nevis has been ranked so beautifully as one of the best COVID response in the Caribbean and the region. Mm -hmm. So these are things we need to focus on. And that mm -hmm. is why this election is so integral. We don't know what storms are coming. We don't know what recession is coming and mm. to what effect it will have. And we're in the hurricane yeah. season. And we are in the hurricane season. Mm -hmm. Again, there are threats out there. We need to stop operating as if we are an island and a federation on our own. Mm -hmm. We operate in a global space. When one of our ministers attend the United Nations, he or she is there as one. St. Kitts and Nevis, mm -hmm. one seat, one country. We one are vote. one. One vote. <laughs> one vote. That is the thing. One vote out of the 193 countries. And so that is the essence, in my opinion, of the People's Labour Party. You bring the red, you bring the yellow, you mix it together, and we get some orange. And we want people to understand this. It is very important for people to understand that we see people, not colors. Mm -hmm. We see country, not colors. We see development, not colors. Yeah. We want economic stability, not colors. We want the professionalization of sports, not colors. We want the development and the expansion of the orange economy, not colors. We want our leaders to export our talents, not bother about colors. We don't want that. People, not colors. And that is what the PLP is mm -hmm. about. The party of inclusion. The and party of inclusion. Thank you so much, Rollies, for that. Because with that, we are going to wrap it up for tonight. <laughs> we have been here for a while. And I know it has been a good show. As I say, I know the youths will be launching a show very shortly. Yes, the pair of youths yes, will be launching yes. a show. So we cannot say everything tonight. But we really have a lot to say for our mm -hmm. own show. Because we will be launching out our show very shortly. And so you will be hearing much from us again mm -hmm. about that show in particular. I know you're excited about yes. that show. But mm -hmm. thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for the third edition of The Point, where it was all about the youths and counting youths in, mm -hmm. in our policy, yes. in our discussion, in our, yes. our political process, yes. um, and integrating the youths in our decision-making process here in St. Kitts and Nevis, under our leader, the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris. Mm -hmm. And so I want to thank you guys for joining us. You have heard from our youth arm of the People's Labour Party, YPLP, tonight. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Richelie, Rollies, thank you so much for joining me here tonight. It was a pleasure.